China is still copying as China is still the word factory. We, we have not to forget this. Uh, this process I talk about in the book uh, is raised uh, the strength of China in his and his export uh, export model. We have to remind this to understand the the Chinese power uh, nowadays. And about the copycat, uh, I just suggest um, you a book uh, of Yu Kuei, his uh, Cosmotechnic, uh, in which this uh, Hong Kongers file, file, um, thinker uh, talk about the copycat uh, in China as a creative process. It's very interesting because uh, he tried to explain why in China technology is so accepted by uh, Chinese people. About uh, uh, Africa is another huge <laughs> topic uh, in which a lot of scholars uh, uh, see works a lot uh, and there are a lot of misunderstanding also in, uh, in China's approach uh, of Africa. But in a nutshell, we can say two things. The first one is that China presents itself uh, as a non-colonial country. So thanks to the Europe and uh, uh, colonialization, China can show uh, his uh, good behavior with uh, African people. But uh, uh, of course, uh, he, China is looking for resources. Uh, this uh, relationship between China and uh, a lot of African countries is changing. It's very important we understand this today because uh, a lot of African countries doesn't more the Chinese help because uh, it is not something that really helps the African society. And for example, Nigeria and other countries put a lot of, a lot of troubles on Chinese investments uh, in their countries. And China has used uh, Africa, Latin America as well, as a field of experimentation of their products. For example, Huawei, that everyone knows today, at the beginning, it used a Latin American country to upgrade their products. And with Africa is the same. And for example, about the facial recognition, a lot of Chinese companies are using African companies to create better devices for the facial recognition because uh, it's hard to recognize a black face. And so they improve their products in Africa thanks to their economical, economical relation with this country and thanks to China's power with this country. We have to remember that there is this uh, uh, Belt and Road Initiative project uh, under which China put a lot of things uh, and uh, in Africa as well. Even if at the beginning it, it was just two um, commercial routes uh, that involved more Europe than Africa. So this relation is very interesting because first of all, for example, we learn a lot of things about Chinese uh, Diplomats, for example. Now, you know, uh, there are a lot of discussion about the so-called wolf warriors, no? The Chinese uh, diplomats that uh, use the social network in a very violent way. Sometimes it's really uh, scary, I think, how these uh, Chinese diplomats react to, some, to something. But uh, at the beginning, Africa was uh, the country where these uh, diplomats talk a lot against, for example, United States, uh, while Chinese uh, officials uh, in uh, Europe and the United States use a different uh, way to, com to discuss with their counterparts. And then there is the economic issues, and then also now there is also the technological issue. But uh, something is changing. We have to, to observe what's happening because uh, China's perception of a lot of countries today is changed. A lot of uh, surveys shows that uh, around the world there is uh, a fear of Chinese power. 